is my third time in Egypt. Your third time? Yep. Right, so is downtown one of your favorite spots? I haven't been in downtown a lot because I've been here for mainly on business. So. Is there like a, a landmark here that you think it's like everyone should visit if they can? Obviously the big landmarks, of course, yeah. <laughs> the big landmarks, uh -huh. the museums. Right. Everyone. What is like a food experience that you had that you think everyone should like eat this food? Uh, I had a friend recommend koshery to me, okay. so I had that on my last trip. Amazing. How do you feel? <laughs> I loved it. Loved it. It's amazing. So good. So good. Why did you decide to stay in downtown? It seemed quite central to a lot of things. Um, it's where a lot of the accommodation was, um, especially the uh, the sort of our price range. Yeah. I think it's exceeded my expectations. I think I wasn't prepared for how, like, sort of, like, massive and just overwhelming everything would be, I suppose. The expectations versus reality. Everything is very different. From, very different. We read the reports and the tour guide from sites and uh, travel magazines, but the real life is very, very different. <laughs> in a bad way or in a good way? Both sides. <laughs> <laughs>
على بعد خطوات من ميدان طلعة حرب هنلاقي المشهد الرائع ده مسجد الرحمة وجنبها بطريركة الأرمن الكاثوليكية تأسست الكنيسة عندما كثر عدد الأرمن في مصر بعد مذابح الأرمانية في بداية القرن العشرين بيميز الكنيسة سقف مرتفع مثلث الشكل من الخارج ودائري من الداخل إضافة إلى هيكل القديسة مريم وقلب السيد المسيح دار المعارف originally started out as printing press now a maven publishing house in the Arab world its role is preserving Arabic literature through reprinting its classics is incredibly important having underwent numerous changes over the time the most notable is the establishment of October a weekly political and social magazine Elismaleya is a corporation that focuses on reviving old buildings and creating new ones that emulate the same style with a modern twist. Their work is a force to be reckoned with on the market, as they are capable of catering to its every need. With the intent of reviving the Egyptian identity by restoring downtown Cairo's 100-year legacy, built by Khedev Ismail, Their efforts are part of the reason why Cairo is such a cosmopolitan city. And a walk through downtown Cairo is like walking through a time-traveling machine. Originally established as Tawakkul, has been a hub for socialites and intellectuals alike, hosting the likes of Taha Hussein, Nagib Mahfouz, and Ahmad Shawi. It also had an important role during the Egyptian revolutionary movement. Passed down from generations of multicultural foreigners, it finally landed into the hands of Egyptians. Lastly, El Ismailia Corporation, which continues on preserving its legacy. What was once Hotel Pension Vinoise back to the 19th century is now known as La Vinoise. This 125-year-old English rose is one of the grandest and picturesque buildings out there. A true representation of downtown Cairo's aesthetics. Now, one of Cairo's most desirable workplaces, it offers everyone a place rich in heritage and a diverse range of facilities. The Davis Bryan Building, more commonly known as Ishurbagi, is a 110-year-old building that embodies the medieval period of architecture in Wales, as it was built by Welsh architect Robert Williams. Its red hue, sheer size, and its tripartite view to downtown streets makes it an incredibly unique building. Lesmalea then acquired the building in modern times, set on revamping it. Thirty-three Shreve Street, one of the oldest residential and commercial buildings in downtown Cairo. Built in 1913, 33 Shreve Pasha is a building that remains a striking reminder of the city's glamorous heritage. Over the last decade, El Ismailia has had it under renovation, with filmmakers and artists using it as a backdrop for their stories. It is also where La Poire opened its first branch in downtown Cairo. City Maridio is a cosmopolitan gateway that links a path with the present. It's divided into two sections, a cinema hall and a theater. The venue has many prolific artists such as Um Kulthum. Um, El Ismailia has revived the place and since then it's been the go-to venue for artistic events and the coolest hangout place on the block. In the Roaring Twenties, 
five-story building was rent up by a Greek family. Now it still stands as Faida. Al Ismaili acquired the building in 2009 in order to renovate and rejuvenate it. The building hosted a contemporary image collective, an independent art initiative for many years, which made the building an attraction point to artists and creatives. Tucked away, Jam resides on 20 Adli Street, and that's the Kodak building. In 1920, George Eastman, the inventor of Kodak, chose Kodak building to be home to the first Kodak branch in Egypt and the Middle East. Its passageway that connects Adli Street and Abdel Khali Street has since been renovated and turned into a pedestrian park. Ismaili acquired the building in 2008 and has since been using the third and the fourth floor as the company's main headquarters. Gharib Morkos Hailed its name from its two owners, the Morkos family who acquired the building in 1956 and the Gharib family who bought the other half in the 1970s. This magnanimous entity adorns the street as one of downtown Cairo's originals. The Smaley acquired it later on and has morphed it into an attraction for a variety of art and visual projects for artists and creatives looking to occupy this vibrant space. This timeless beauty, favored by artists and exhibitionists alike, Tamara was previously a bank in her own building, seeing its beauty and potential. The Smaley is working on preserving it. The place hosted Vogue Arabia shoots and the very first Cairo Photo Week in collaboration with Photopia. First Consul turned to working space by El Ismailia Development. Consulaya is surely a head turner, a magnet for tech survey entrepreneurs. This place is considered to be a vital catalyst for the city's economic recovery post shutdown. The 95 year old building is a heaven and a catalyst in one. أبو طارق الأول ده عايز أقول إن هو آخر معلم في مصر، آخر معلم في مصر لأن هو لسه محافظ على الكواليتي بتاعه، بالنسبة بقى للجلابية والشبشب وكل حاجة. فده مفيش منه هيتكرر تاني، بالنسبة بقى لتاريخ المعلم يعود تقريبا للحرب العالمية التانية. هي دخلت الكشري فيها، كانت حوالي سنة حاجة و40، 47 48 تقريبا، كان مع والده 16 سنة، موضوع الشهرة بتاعته منين؟ من زمان، أيام لما كنا في العربية كان زمان هنا وسط البلد كلها مسارح وأهاوي وحاجات كثيرة كان الفنانين تخرج كان هو لسه بيعمل المكرونة والكشري في عيش شقة شقة العيش ويعملها دي بدأت معاه العلامة كان بقى في عاد المهندس وعاد الإمام الناس دي كلها كانت تخلص مصاريح وتيجي تاخد من عنده دي سبب شهرته الأولانية بعد كده بقى بدأ يحكوا بدأ الأجانب تعدي جنبنا كمان حاجة المتحف المصري فكل الأجانب كانت تيجي يجي يعدوا بقى One of Egypt's most recognizable restaurants, Felfela in the center Cairo, the first eatery to promote Egyptian and Mediterranean food both inside and outside of Egypt is Felfela, with its veritably authentic decoration. Felfela offers a unique experience and not just a place to eat, and feels the originality of the typical oriental decoration that implies the traditions of Egyptian society. Al-Abd Food is a story of passion and craftsmanship. From humble beginnings, Al-Abd Food grew to become one of the leading producers of Eastern and Western sweets, bakery and other food products in Egypt. In the late 19s, first branch was opened on Talat Harbi Street. The main goal was to bring joy to people on various occasions and to draw a smile on the faces of Egyptian families, from bakeries, croissants, and Danish to Western and Oriental sweets and ice cream. Quader, the confectionery of dreams originated in Damascus, Syria, during the era of the flirty 30s. <laughs> يعني لو انت اللي هتشتري دلوقتي ايه الزبادي الزبادي تقول تمام 
وبعد الزبالة توت ممكن مثلا نوتيلا ومانجو عشان ما احبش المكسرات اللي هي الجبنة الروسية وكده That delicacy strutted their way afterwards into Egypt, and it's safe to say they won the Egyptians' heart and taste buds. Passionate about preserving the traditional whilst experimenting with new flavors is something they have been committed to and shall remain their goal. Capable of delighting enthusiasm with mouth-watering sweets, rich in authentic taste of Oriental and Western sweets, stopping by them is a must. ايوه ده اول فرع من 1990 تمام. اوكي. ما في ماء ما كنتش ام عبد الحليم والملك فاروق وسفريه بريطانيا لا ده في ناس حلوه زمان. هو اول فرع عمل يعني عمل ايس كريم الحلاوه ذات نفسها فرع. هو اللي هو اللي عمل ايوه طبعا عمل ايس كريم في مصر كلها. واو طب حضرتك تفتكر ليه قرروا ان يفتحوا في وسط البلد؟ اشمعنى وسط البلد؟ لا دي ام البلد كلها يعني دي كانت اول حاجه بدا فتحنا فيها. يعني كمصري اولا ايه مصر ام الدنيا اول حاجه ثاني حاجه اهم حاجه تفتح في القاهره اللي هي حيطه مميز يعني عشان هي العاصمه بالظبط كده عشان كل الف... يعني كل من هو بينزل مصر بينزل هنا كل الخواجات والعرب زي ما حد شايف الناس كلها بتنزل هنا كلها فدي يعتبر من غير كده مساحه ما شاء الله كبيره اه ما شاء الله تعتبر من اقوى يعني يعتبر الفرع الاول على مستوى الجمهوريه كلها عملت ايس كريم وعملت مربات وعملت عملتي ذات نفسه سفرجي لابس طربوش يعني كان في حاجات زمن حلوه جميله الله اه امال ايه اه ده جزء من التراث المصري ده اساس هو ده التراث المصري زمان زمان كان كله بيلبس بدل وطربوش صح كده لا ايوه صح ده حقيقي معلش انا بلخبط لا 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 براحتك اه اوكي يعني حتى النجفه دي من 1891 